As someone who grew up with G1 Insecticons, I get happy anytime Hasbro announces some new ones, whether they're kind of Insecticon-ish, but not the ones I remember, or they were, they were the ones I remember, but they're real small now, but I don't care because they're Insecticons. And then every now and then we get a treat, a deluxe class Insecticon, kickback no less. And this one a little bit different because it is not G1 based. This is Fall of Cybertron kickback. And as such, he is a very Cybertronian style of grasshopper. To the point where calling him a grasshopper is pretty unfair because the shape is there, but there's a lot that does not quite match that description. So we are going to go with Monstrous Insect, which is about as close as I can get <laughs> with this current situation. So we will talk about this Monstrous Insect, starting with the plastic colors, which is a very deep, rich shade of purple that I quite enjoy. And something you will notice about this Insecticon, no black. That is a traditional Insecticon color not present on this toy. Instead, we have two tones of gray, both in more metallic looking colors, which gives it more of a machine feel, which for Cybertron, I guess, is an appropriate look. Deco-wise, you will also find a lot of gold instead of the bright yellow that the original was detailed with, which again is a much more modern, much more, I don't know, technological change. And I still like how it looks. Purple, gold is a very royal color scheme. I like it. And beyond that, a few little highlights here. There's some pink just to show off a little bit of Fall of Cybertron's, you know, Energon-based color schemes with a lot of, like, energy showing through. So, you also have a little bit of that. So, deco-wise, I'm perfectly happy with the toy. It would have been nice if Japan did one that was uh, in the traditional G1 colors. They went with more of a metallic silver to the whole thing. But, you know, you can't have everything. So, let's actually talk the details of this thing. Uh, first off, it does have some traditional grasshopper shapes. You can see it is six-legged. But that rear leg, which of course is huge for doing the hopping... Uh, not really much like any kind of bug leg. Now, you know, like, for a while it's just hard for me to actually kind of figure out, is this the foot? Like, is this where the foot is? Or is this just like an extra joint and this is actually the foot? And I don't know. Either way, this is way too thick to be an actual grasshopper leg, you can see. Because it's mostly just the robot mode leg, just kind of hollowed out and extended. But, oh well. This is where it falls into the monstrous category. The front legs, I will give it, they are much more insect-like. They do have a lot of the, you know, instead little uh, little hairs that are on the legs, these little spikes. It does have a pair of claws on each one, so you get more of the insect feel there, as well as the butt of the whole thing, which you can see is decoed, you know, kind of like an actual insect would be, like the, like the actual shell of a bug with a lot more gold here and leaving a little bit of that purple showing through to give it a, a bit of a pattern as well. And you can see some gold pe poking through on the back, which is another, again, I, I like these little touches, you know, because it gives it kind of what organic feel you can have with something like this. The head is again, where we point out the fact that this is some kind of monster where I'm pretty sure Earth Grasshoppers do not have gigantic jaws like that. He looks like he can rip through pretty much anything, which is what Insecticons are known to do. And like the G1 Insecticons, it's made from the head of the robot mode, and there's not exactly a lot of perceived area where the eye can be. Uh, I guess a little bit of molding that's raised up there on the sides could be the eyes, but it's, you know, it's a little nondescript about a little bit of paint helping it out. What's definitely not like the G1 toy are the wings, which instead of silver chrome are translucent purple with these enormous claw arms forming up the main structure of the wing. This is definitely not G1 accurate, and this is what really pulls it into the monster category. But for whatever it is, I, I'm a fan of how it looks. You know, it does come across as an Insecticon to me. It just looks much fiercer and much more powerful so i i am a fan um for playability i'm not too thrilled with the beast mode because as beast modes go 
Uh, you got the ball joint here, and you know the hinges that work in the legs and such, but there's not a whole lot of posing you can do with him. He's pretty much just going to stand that way, largely because there's no articulation in the front legs. They're all one big piece that's stuck on a ball joint, and unfortunately it does not clip in very solidly. One thing I will detract this beast mode with is there's really not a lot holding it together. There's a few parts where it feels like something should peg or tab in, and it unfortunately does not. So you've got little sections that like to come come up, uh, open like that. The beast mode legs in the front like to come unclipped. So, I don't know. It's, it, it's, a, it's a little bit insecure. So we'll, we'll go with that. Now, for actual playability, if we want to add something to it, there's an undocumented feature which involves his disc launching weapon, which we'll explore more in robot mode. But for now, I will demonstrate it can clip into the wings as such. You can see the little tabs from the uh, beast mode wings that can hook on and give him a little bit of armament in this beast mode. However, it does kind of take away the wings as separate pieces and makes it more like just one big pile of mechanical parts. Now he, he doesn't much look like an insect at this point as he does a pile of shrapnel, you know, like a bombshell hit him or something. But, oh uh, well, at least they found some way of actually getting that to attach to his alternate mode. So let's get him out of the alternate mode so we can actually see what he can do in his standard robot mode. Now, for starters, we will unclip these legs officially and then unhinge the jaw all the way. This, uh, There's a lot of, like, little parts that don't quite lock in place, so it all kind of just falls apart. But we can... Un uh, unhinge his butt, his butt splits open. If you want to say he's got doubled Potus Manus, go right ahead. I won't blame you on this one. Now the trick to this toy is the whole midsection has to come all the way across. That gives you the room to actually put these together, which will form his beast mode, or his, uh, his robot mode's pelvis section, which in order to accomplish, we have to rotate the thighs all the way. Fold up the legs and secure them. With a few hinge work, we can put those where they belong. That all locks together by closing down this purple piece to form the chest. And just make sure the legs are all nice and locked together because there's little tabs this all forms up with. Mm, it doesn't. Mm, Trying to make. Come on. Come on, be secure for me. Don't be insecure. Be secure. Be sure of yourself. Be confident. Mm. Well, it's unfortunately not going to cooperate with me. So, mm. you know, it's all there. It just doesn't. It's just not too tight, unfortunately. Okay, let's ignore it for now. I don't want to spend too. I don't want to spend too long just kind of fiddling, get, trying to get the the lock and the fit to work perfectly here. Rotate the butt around to become the two arms. Finish off the chest section. Get that out of the way. Fold the antenna and rotate the head around. And at this point, depending on what you actually want to do to get these beast mode legs out of the way and what you want to do with the wings, you can actually call the robot mode done. That is our... Cybertronian form, kickback from Fall of Cybertron. Okay, so form-wise, I have some issues with the bug mode, I will admit. For the robot mode, I don't have an issue whatsoever. This is one of the coolest and nicest looking robot modes I have ever seen. One of my personal favorites, especially out of the Generations line. I'll give you a look at the head, which is very much akin to the original kickback's head with the big antenna sticking up off the side, the visor eyes. It actually does look quite a bit meaner, and there's little details I like. Like, you see the actual, like, insect mandibles shaped into his helmet, just to give him a little bit more of a bug-like appearance. It's just, it's a nice little head sculpt. I'm a, I am a fan. And look at the, I love the design on this. I love the design on this robot mode. See, you can see, you see uh, a lot of sharp lines, a lot of 
sharp angles. He's got kind, he's almost got kind of a Gundam style aesthetic to him. He's much more of a Japanese style robot going on here with very sharp angles, very sharp uh, shoulder guards, sharp chest going outward, sharp everywhere. Like I'm, I'm such a fan of how this looks. Down into the legs as well. You can see those high knee spikes as well as what used to be the insect feet. Now these massive clawed feet. Really, really love it. Not much going on in the back. He's, you know, this is where he keeps his beast mode legs. But for the most part, he doesn't really need to hide any kind of kibble. It all kind of carries over. Most of the shell of the vehicle, of the beast mode when wound up on the arms. And I don't mind this because they look good as arm guards. They add some more purple to his robot mode as well as giving him what looks like spike weapons that he can punch people with. And aside from that, you can see the deco is pretty much the same. All the purple and gold has come together into the robot mode chest. It looks quite cool, like a very cool set of armor. And a little bitty Decepticon logo right there in the middle, just to, just to confirm, yes, he is of the villainous sort. Because, yeah, he certainly does not look like a hero at this point. Now, at this point, we can go into accessories, which for that, we can pull off the translucent parts of the wings, and those will actually fit inside of his hands to give him a pair of double-bladed weapons. That's quite good. You know, okay, so it's pretty typical for wings to become sword weapons, okay? It's not typical of wings to leave behind these massive claws to give him even more weaponry than he had before. This does break the illusion of his G1 look with the wings pointed straight up out of the shoulders, but I kind of don't mind. Again, this kind of plays to his more monstrous form in beast mode as well as making him look a lot fiercer and giving him much more... Uh, weaponry to work with, which is a not a bad thing. And this, before we go into like the final accessory, we'll bring that disc launcher back. We'll go into articulation. As you saw, these are hinged, so both of them do have a range of articulation, as well as a ball joint on the back for more maneuvering. His head is ball jointed and can rotate quite well, as well as look up and down. Warning for long term use, it is on a translucent ball joint, so be wary. Shoulders are universal with a ball joint as well as a swivel to them, so it works in many ways. Quite like that. Ball jointed on the elbows, so full rotation and 90 degrees of bend there. Wrists also rotate on mushroom pegs. No waist articulation because we had to bring the pelvis together in robot mode, but great range in the, in the hip, full ball joint. Thigh swivel, 90 degree knee and full ankle tilt back forth and to the side this gives him a fantastic range of articulation letting him pose in a great many ways and i like having the extra appendages up top just to give him a little bit more to do he looks good in a lot of poses again all those sharp lines really giving him a very fierce dynamic look i am such a fan such a fan We'll go ahead and take the blades out of his hands now, and we'll prepare him for his mega weapon, which is, of course, the disc launcher, which will give you a closer look now. It's kind of got shrapnel's blades going on, you know, kind of a horned beetle look to it, which is kind of kind of interesting, a little allusion to his other uh, Insecticon brethren. It's mostly done up in the gray, the darker gray, rather, with the light gray on top, a little bit of the pink and gold. And the disc itself, translucent in color, so it's like firing a big disc of Energon that barely goes anywhere. Yeah, I'm not even going to, I'm not going to bother with a missile launching joke because it's, uh, it's a pathetic launcher, to be honest. I don't know if the disc is too heavy or if the plastic just isn't stiff enough to give it a good spring off, but it's one of the weaker launchers I've seen, which is kind of unfortunate. But we can augment it. It does have ports down here as well as up here in order for connecting these pieces on and adapting it. And you can have it coming off here, but it kind of looks dumb. It's more natural and this is kind of how the instructions really want you to do it, to plug them in up top, and that will give you more of a massive crossbow look. 
Now, the problem with giant weapons is they have to have some pretty sturdy joints in order to hold them, and when you're ball-jointed like kickback, that does not generally happen. So he kind of just stands there and menaces with this massive thing. So getting to pose with it is a little bit trickier. Being so wide, it's possible to two-hand, so you can at least support it a little bit more. But... Yeah, it's a little bit it's a little bit unfortunate and that this kind of comes with ball joint engineering you know it's really not going to be stiff enough to actually hold something that large but that was the thing that fall of cybertron did was those massive weapons as the main attraction and it does have some basis in the game's actual weaponry so that's actually kind of cool so for the most part yeah that is my look at generations kickback the beast mode has some issues, and the robot mode, as we saw during transformation, has some connection issues with its transformation. So I guess that's universal for both modes. But it's a very unique beast mode, and the robot mode is spectacular. I'm, I absolutely love this figure, and it's one of my. It was one of my favorites to pose and play with when I first got it. It's just unfortunate the other Insecticons didn't come out in that style because I get the feeling the other d designs would have been absolutely manic. Like I would have loved to have seen how they came out in the same aesthetic. But, alas, not to be. And this is probably a mold that we'll never see any kind of reuse. So, uh, we got what we were going to get. And what we got, I still think, is still a really cool toy in spite of a few flaws.